Hey, what's up, everyone? I'm back to recap week two of BB Can 6, and a lot of things kind of happened this week, so I'm looking forward to talking about them all. Um, thank you for coming back and uh, you know checking my page out and everything and subbing and all that stuff. I hear you all. I see you all. I just want to thank you all for all the support and love you've showed. Uh, that being said, let's get to it. So we find out that Andrew actually tried to push for Ozina to stay during week one. But, you know, which wasn't a bad thing. He had the right idea in mind. The problem is, I think he pushed too hard. And by pushing too hard, he pushed people away. Now, a guy like Andrew, you know, especially after his first week, it was a bad start, you know, getting into the house and having to, you know, put seven people in hell and seven people in heaven. This guy already put himself in a bad spot. He should try to lay low and fall into the shadows instead of trying to push his agenda and trying to save someone. Listen, this is week one. Everybody, it doesn't matter who leaves, anybody and everyone is disposable in week one. So don't try to ruin your game even more this early on. I get what he's trying to do. He tr he wants to bring entertainment and trying to show he's making moves. But man, you cannot be doing that, especially this early in the game and especially with everything that happened in week one. Um, and I do feel bad for the guy. I really do because he, you know, his hand was kind of played. He was put in a bad spot. Who knows how he would have played if he never had that, that cup in the first week and had to make those choices. Who knows? He seems pretty funny and lovable and all that stuff. So I think his hand was kind of just forced in a, in a weird way. And, and I do feel bad for the guy because his game changed from the moment he had that cup in his hand. And it, to me, it looks like it kind of spilled over into week two. So... Um, Andrew, you know, that being said, he tries to save Rosina and, you know, people don't like that too much. Then, uh, what happens? His buddy Ryan wins the HOH. That's awesome. You know, his boy, his alliance, people he's working with, people he trusts wins the HOH. So that's, that's great news. You know, that's amazing, right? Well, not in this situation. So Ryan wins HOH and what does Ryan do? He puts up his two closest allies. What are you doing, man? This is a guy that talks about how smart he is and, and he's watched uh, 800 hours or shows or whatever he's talking about. But the problem is, man, this guy's so full of it. You know, horrible move. What are you doing, man? You know, don't don't try to overplay things. Don't overcomplicate things. Big Brother is a very basic, basic, basic game. You want to get the people out that are coming for you. You don't want to put your friends and your allies at risk. You just don't want to do that. It's It makes no sense to do that, especially this early on in the game where you're going to need numbers to move forward. So what does Ryan do? He goes and puts Hamza and Andrew on the block. These are his boys. What are you doing, man? And he has this big master plan to backdoor people. The problem is, man, you have no friends in the house. How are you going to backdoor someone and gain the numbers if you have no friends? Your only two friends are now sitting on the block and they can't do anything for you. They can't even vote however you want because they're on the block. So, buddy, big mistake, horrible move, horrible play. Uh, Got to be one of the worst moves uh, I've, I've seen. One of the worst HOHs I've seen in modern big brother i'm telling you it's it's really bad that's that is a bad bad move one thing i find uh with with ryan is i notice he talks to people you know he talks at people he doesn't talk with people he talks at them he almost tells them how they should play he almost tells them what they need to do and how their game is gonna affect this and how they have to do this and that buddy pay attention to your game don't worry about their game let them make their mistakes you know use their mistakes in your favor what are you doing coaching them through the season and first of all who are you to coach them you have the same experience as them. You know, you're in the same season. You haven't been able to come out yet and kind of dissect it all and look at everybody's game and say, oh man, this is where it went wrong. You know, I've had that. A lot of past alumni have had that where we've played it and we can look back at our mistakes now and be like, okay, and we have the experience to say it. So, you know, who is this guy to coach these people through the game? What are you doing, man? These are your these are your enemies. These are the people that are coming for you, man. And you're giving them the answers and kind of, you know, showing them all the ropes. Like, what are you doing, man? This is this is not how to play the game. So I just think I just think he made a horrible every move he made this week was absolutely horrendous. You know, and, and telling people there's a bigger plan, there's a back door. What are you doing, buddy? You just made people feel uncomfortable and it just it, it just didn't sit right with a lot of people. And and I don't blame them. If I was in that house too and in that situation, I'd be, I wouldn't feel comfortable with you either, you know? It just didn't seem very trustworthy. Um, now, here's the thing. 
when you're HOH, okay, that's the week where you make your moves. That's the week where you set yourself up for the following weeks because you can't play next week. This is the week when you're HOH to make the deals, to tell people, even if they're not on your radar, even if you were never going to put them up, you make a deal with them and say, hey, I won't put you up this week, but you have to remember me next week or what's going on or who's your targets or whatever. This is the week you do that. This is where you gain all your information because people want to be safe and they're going to spill a little bit, you know, give a little bit to get a little bit. So even if you are not thinking of putting them on the block, you don't, you don't let them know that right away. Don't say, Hey, I'm not putting you up because then they have, they have no reason to tell you anything. So, you know, when they come in and say, and he says, Oh, don't worry, you're safe. This is my target. No, you don't do that. So you kind of fish for a little bit, you know, you fish for a little bit of information and just tell them, you know, like, Hey, if I don't put you up, this is what has to happen. So if they do go back on their word, you can say, Hey man, like, you know, it's a strike on their word. These people aren't trustworthy, things like that. Um, uh, you know, so for the fact that he did that and, and, uh, he put up his two boys you know, what are you doing, man? It was just horrible. It was just hard to watch. It was horrible. And uh, yeah, bad, bad HOH. So I want to get into the HOH competition a little bit. So this HOH actually tells a lot of information. And I hope these people were paying attention. These are questions about the house guests. Okay, who's the dumbest person? Who is this? Who has the most friends? These are very important questions that everyone should be listening. You know, when they say Paris is the dumbest person, that's very good. That's what you want to hear. You know, we did a challenge in season three where people put like smartest or dumbest to smartest. And I was near the bottom and I purposely walked myself near the bottom to one of the dumbest players. You don't want people to think you're smart. And here it is. Season three, we have super fans walking right up to the front saying, hey, I'm a smart player. Look at me. What are you doing? You don't do that. Don't put attention on you. You want you want to downplay how smart you are. You don't want people, you want people to overlook you. You don't want people to see you as a threat. So, you know, the fact that people think Paris isn't very smart is amazing. That's what you want. She should be celebrating and happy. This is perfect. You know, and it just, if you dissect every question, you can kind of get a sense of what the house thinks of each person. And you can almost see where people are sitting in the house. So this competition gave a lot of information and I hope people were paying attention and listening because I guarantee you a question about this competition will come up down the road. You know, who did the house think this or how many times was Paris, uh, you know, an answer in that question, whatever it is, a question of this competition will come up down the road if it's final three, final five, whatever it is. So I hope they're all paying attention and I hope they realized what the other house guests think of them. Very, very key HOH, just a, an early on assessment of how the house sees you. And I really hope they were thinking about it. So only time will tell. Okay, so now it's time for Ryan's nominations. He goes right up to Andrew and Hamza and pretty much tells them both they're going on the block. He tells Andrew, listen, I have to do what the house wants. 10 people want me to do this. I have to do this. Man, what are you doing, buddy? These are the people you're working with and you're going to put them up because the other side of the house wants you to. Of course they want you to, man. That's their competition, not yours. These are people that are coming after you. These are people that you're putting on the block that are going after them and you're doing their dirty work. Man, horrible play. I don't understand what, what this guy's mindset was. You never, ever, ever put your closest allies on the block. Now, here's the other thing. Then Hamza volunteers to go on the block. Guys, come on. I hope you all saw through this. He knew he was going on the block regardless. And he's going to be like, hey, put me on the block. That way I said I'm going on the block and you didn't nominate me. It's a thing for his own ego. He was going up regardless. He, you know, and it's just a shame that the show kind of played into that and made it seem like, oh, yeah, this is Hamza's doing. It wasn't Hamza's doing. He was going up regardless. And, uh, you know, it's just his own way of saying, oh, yeah, I wasn't nominated. I volunteered. But whatever, he's not the target. He knows it anyway. He's safe. Everything's cool. But the show kind of edits, edits it down to make it seem like this is Hamza's master plan. So, uh, you know, I know how that side of the story goes. I know how that side of the show goes. And uh, But it's very obvious that he would have gone up either way. He's just trying to, you know, get himself set up in the, you know, to the viewers as some, like, mastermind. And, uh, hey, whatever. It's the way it goes. And, uh if the show plays along, hey, the show plays along. So uh, he nominates Andrew and Hamza, and let's see how that goes. So then Ryan tells everybody to go and throw the veto competition. What are you doing, man? You know, you, all you're doing is making people feel uncomfortable. Just tell them to win and keep it the same, or just tell them to win and leave it at that. Don't tell everyone to throw it, throw it, throw it, because people are saying, well, 
You're telling me you want me to throw it. You want one of them to win. Who is the replacement? Could it be one of them? Obviously, it's somebody else, right? So it could be any one of them. So why would they risk that? Why would they throw the competition to risk one of their own allies going on the block? It makes no sense. This guy just overthought everything. He thinks he's bigger than he is, and I think he thinks he's more strategical than he is. He's telling them to throw the competition so one of them can go up without telling them one of them is going to go up. But he's pretty much implying, hey, through throw this competition, I'm backdooring someone. And they very well know it's going to be one of them. So this guy just absolutely just horribly played this whole week. And it's just horrible. And I just don't, I don't see his mindset. So horrible play with the nominations. Horrible play with telling people to throw the veto. And just... I don't even know. This guy calls himself some super fan and, and a genius and all that, but I just I don't see it. I don't know. I don't I don't know where his head's at and where his game's at. So then we have Paris. Paris is the anti-showman's player of the year. She's saying no man's, no chance to a showman's. Nope, not happening, not me, nope, not a chance. Guys, like I've said this before, it's easy to talk and say what you want in these pre-game interviews. You're in a room with these people. You can say whatever you want. Nobody's there to correct you. You could talk as big as you want. You can downplay your game. You can say whatever you want. And there is nobody there that will change your mind or say differently. So here Paris is talking. No, I'm not doing a showman's nothing. Well, in comes Jesse. This is week two, guys. Week two. And a girl that was so strongly against showmances is, is just madly fallen for this guy, Jesse. And, you know, she's saying, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. This is two weeks in, and she's already all about him. And this was her whole pre-game was, nope, I'm here about the game, no showmances at all. So, you know, it just goes to prove how these pre-game interviews, all of them, are just complete garbage and crap. Because they're going to say whatever the hell they want to say, just to pump up the crowd, and, you know, just that's it. But when they go in the game, and in the actual house, everything just falls apart, and it just, you know, it, it just, it doesn't work, and it never goes as planned so all these people come in with these plans like i said paris wants us no way no showman's she's madly uh falling for this guy jesse hey he's a stud you know good on him but uh you know it just goes to show that you can't base a lot of what you think on these pre-game bios or on these players because they go in the house and they can they play completely different so now they play the pov it's the tomb raider challenge uh the competition looks absolutely amazing such a sick sick competition and Erica wins. Now here's the thing. You see Hamza in the diary room talking about how he's so close. And you, you hear Erica talking in the diary room how Hamza's right behind her. But if you actually look at the footage, when she's done her puzzle and runs across, Hamza does, only has like one block on his puzzle. It wasn't even close. So it just goes to show you how editing comes into play. I mean, it's not a big factor, but it's just an idea. Editing is big on a show. So Erica blows everyone out of the water clearly because nobody was even close. If Hamza was the closest one, he had like one or two squares on his entire puzzle, uh, which I mean, wasn't even close to being done. And she wins the competition. So Erica wins the veto. And now uh, it's up to her. Is she going to use it? Is she not going to use it? What's going on? So we go to the veto ceremony and Erica decides not to use the veto, which is the right move. Hey, one of these guys are going to go home. Who cares? See you later. And uh, it's done. Well, then you have Ryan. Ryan's all looking disappointed and he's all sad. Buddy, you made the nominations. This is your HOH week. You should be jumping up and down no matter who goes home. You should have nominated two people you don't trust, you're not working with, you don't like, whatever the cause is. One of them goes home, who cares? You know, at least one of them is guaranteed to go home. You put up two people that are coming for you or not working with you. If one of them wins the veto or someone takes one of them off, you put up a third person that you're not working with. You say you have no friends in this house, so you pretty much had 14 people to choose from and you pick the two people you're working with, man. What are you doing? So horrible, horrible, horrible. He's all disappointed. He had one job to do. That was to save two people he's working with and one of them is going home. It blows my mind. I, I just can't get it. So um, that's your veto. So now Andrew and Hamza are stuck on the block and one of them is guaranteed to go home. Okay, now I want to talk about the clear divide in the house. There is obviously the red room and the white room, I guess, or whatever it's called. I made a video right before these people left to sequester and I posted it out and I said, guys, 
If you're going in the show, you need to watch this video because I'm going to give you some helpful tips. One of those tips was pick your bed wisely. I said it in the video very clearly. I said pick your bedroom wisely because that will divide the house. You always have two separate rooms and they end up working together. That's just the way it is because it's your room. Your stuff is in that room. You sleep in that room. You have an excuse to be in that room. So if there's three people in your room, all three of you have an excuse to be in that room and just be hanging out. It's your room. You're just hanging in your bed. You're laying down in your bed. You're getting dressed. You need to get something out of your bag. Whatever it is, you have a reason to be in your room. Whereas someone in the white room doesn't have a reason to be in the red room unless they're talking game or strategy or whatever you want to call it. So if a person in the red room is in the red room, it's not suspicious. If someone from the white room is in the red room, it's like, what are you doing in here? It's that's just the way it is. And you know, I said it, I said it in the video. I said, you guys pick your bed wisely. And sure enough, the house gets split with the two rooms. So there's the preppy people or we're going to call it pretty people. I don't know what they're calling the one side and then the other people on the other side, but I don't know what, what, the, what they're being called, but that's said by the showmances and all that in one side. And then I guess the leftovers, I don't know what you want to call it in the other side. The house is definitely divided. All right. So then Veronica goes and calls a house meeting. Now here's the thing. Why are you even calling a house meeting? There was no reason for that. You know, everyone's kind of already against Ryan. They find him awkward. Nobody really talks to him. His HOH reign is kind of over. He has no power left. The, the veto ceremony is over. Once the veto ceremony is over, whoever's HOH literally is powerless. And they're probably in the worst spot or one of the worst spots in the house because they can't even play the next week. They've just made a new enemy. Whoever stays, you know, is usually against them or they've usually pissed somebody off in the house um, during that week. So, you know, they have no power. So why are you calling a house meeting to call Ryan out? I mean, the people that are against them already are already against them. So I don't think you're going to gain any traction by doing that. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to give Ryan this. Um, he kind of saves himself a little bit uh, in this meeting. I think it actually kind of worked in his favor more than against him. Because, you know, she's calling him out and saying whatever she's saying to him. And he just basically says, hey, guys, listen, I have nobody in this house. Look at me. I have nobody. If you look around carefully, you'll see there's a lot of twos and threes, pairs and groups of threes and big groups. If you pay attention, you'll see it. And that's another thing I've talked in my video. Look around. You will see who hangs out with who during the day. They're obviously working together. They're friends. They're getting along. If you just sit down and look at who's hanging out in what room, you can literally piece together who's working with who. It's not very hard. And and, and you know what? Ryan's done that. And he opened everyone's eyes because you kind of look around, you know, you see people's faces like, oh, man, maybe I didn't see that. But you see a lot of twos and threes. So I think he came out actually a little better from this house meeting that didn't even have to happen. Uh, Veronica calling him out for no reason at all. He had no friends. He had nothing. And he openly says, guys, I'm alone here. Use me. Take me in as, as, as a number. Use me. I'm not coming for you. Whoever takes me, I'm working with you. And also at the same time, look around at your competition and who's working with who. So I think I'm glad that they called that house meeting. I'm glad he kind of you know, got in a better spot. As bad as his HOH is, I'm kind of rooting for the guy. You know, he's a lone wolf. You know, he has no friends and nothing's going on. Horrible HOH, but I want to see him fit in somewhere and be able to play. Hopefully he can make some better moves and learn from this week because man, it was bad. It was bad. So that was a good house meeting for him. And I hope he can bounce back and kind of benefit from it. And you know what? I think depending on who wins HOH, I think he's in good hands. I think he's going to be safe. For week three. So now we're at eviction night. So we have Hamza and Andrew on the block. We have a unanimous vote. I think it was 12 to 0, 11 0, 12 0, whatever it was. Andrew just runs out the house, doesn't even say goodbye. Uh, whatever. That's the way it is. Some people like to do that. No big deal. See you later. They honestly don't care. The people that run out, they're just like, see you later. Bye. The door closed behind them. They move on and go on with their day. They don't care. So I don't know if he was trying to give them a shot, like kind of screw you. Uh, but I'll tell you right now, the people left in the house are just like, whatever, see you later. You know, they, they don't care. Um, you know, I, I actually like Andrew and I'm, I'm kind of disappointed how his hand was played. I think he could have done okay. Uh, he, he pretty much is like a Paul Jackson 2.0. Uh, that's the vibe I kind of got from him. 
But I like the guy. I mean, I liked him, and I, and I was hoping to see him do okay. I think if the first week went differently where he didn't get that cup, I think he, he could have positioned himself a little bit better. But that's the way it goes, and it was just a bad draw. It was just a bad draw for him. He kind of got screwed a little bit, but hey, it's the way it goes. He couldn't bounce back. But uh, yeah, so he gets voted out 12-0, to 0, and that is your week. So you know what, guys? It was a pretty weird week nothing too crazy another unanimous vote which isn't bad people complain they want to see flips and mixed votes guys i know in the audience you want to see one thing but when you're playing the game if you're really playing the game for the prize you don't care for split votes you don't care about flipping votes you just care about surviving another week and if that means unanimous votes for 10 weeks straight or whatever it is hey that's the way it is Trust me, the people in the house that are in there for the right reasons really don't care uh, if it's a 10 to 0, 9 to 0, 12 to 0, or a 5 4, whatever it is, they don't care. So it was a pretty straightforward week. Um, it was obvious who was going home. He was a target from the start. Uh, so no surprises there. But let's see how week three uh, shapes up. I think the game's going to start you know, playing, I hope, because there's a lot of hold ha hand holding this week. I noticed. It's just there's a lot of people getting along and which is fine. Hey guys, they're playing the right game. I know it's not the greatest TV, but they're playing the right game. You're not in there to, to cause drama. I know it's an entertaining show. It's a show about entertainment, but if you're in there for the right reasons, you don't care about entertaining the crowd. You want the prize. So I see a lot of people kind of just playing under the radar, uh, you know, which is great for their game, bad for the viewers, great for their game. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see when they're kind of forced to come out and play because there's a lot of angles right now that are kind of being uh, exposed and it's just a matter of time for them to be exposed and then, you know, the fireworks are going to go off and I feel like they're going to go off big. So um, that's my recap, guys. I hope everything, I hope you guys like the recap and I will be doing one every single week. I also do a podcast with Evil Dick every week, at Dick at Night it's called. Um, yeah, just so if you have any questions or anything, you know, just hit me up directly. You can drop them in the comments below, uh, DM me, whatever you want to do. Uh, you know, if there's ways you think I can improve these, let me know. I'm new to this, so I'm open to anything. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy it uh, as much as I enjoy talking to you guys and kind of just giving my view on it. I mean, I, you know, I didn't get to watch the feeds very much this week because it's March break. I have both my kids at home with me alone, so I'm keeping them busy doing all this stuff. I have no time for feeds. So this week was strictly on just what I saw on the TV. So my views could be totally wrong. It's an edited show and it's a heavily, heavily edited show. So, and that's one thing I've noticed this, this year too, is th they're not showing much game talk. I don't know if it's because there isn't much game talk, but they're showing a lot of fluff. Like I get that, that Hasbro is a sponsor, so they're showing them playing Twister and all that stuff. I get they have to do that. It's, it's, that's the way it is. But you know, they're showing, this the stuff they're showing isn't really necessary, I find. I mean, there's, when there's stuff that they could be showing, if there's game talk, if there's, you know, bonds being made or whatever it is, the important stuff that kind of gives the real answers to the viewer. And, uh, you know, unless you're watching the feeds, you kind of see everything or you see everything, which you really don't. But anyway, um, so I don't know. I, I, like I said, this week was just strictly on the show. So it depends how heavily they edited. That's just my view on it all. So anyway, again, I hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you soon. See you.